A lot's happened uh, this year. I have never understood, though, and I feel like this is the right day to, uh, this is the right opportunity to, to ask you, why was Elmo standing behind Boris Johnson as he, uh, as he won the great majority? I think it's a unique feature, actually, of British elections that, you know, anyone can stand against any of the MPs, including the Prime Minister. And we see this going back. Look at footage from Margaret Thatcher uh, standing in Finchley, and you see someone with a bucket on their head next to them. So it's a slightly ridiculous scene, but it does, uh, I suppose, add a little bit of humour uh, to cut through the gravity um, of the moments, but that's why Elmo was standing uh, behind. I think as the camera panned out, there was an even bigger gallery of, of slightly strange creatures uh, standing against him, but it turns out that he, he beat them hands down on the night. Well, well, actually, it sounds like a fantastic tradition. Um, all right, so with that cleared up, um, you, you, you point out the system, uh, the, the situation still um, has a lot of gravity. Carson, how how grave is this situation? I mean, what do you expect for Brexit in 2020? I think Brexit is going to continue because um, the, the, the thing is we will now start the negotiations about the future trade agreement and uh, the, the deadline there is end of 2020 and I think there is no single trade agreement which has been negotiated within less than 11 months. So there is extremely a high chance that they will not finish um, the negotiations between the UK government and the EU government. So this, this idea of could there be a disorderly Brexit will be uh, very quickly back on the table. And is hard, Carson, do you still think hard Brexit is a possibility? I think hard Brexit is still a possibility because remember that Boris Johnson already said that he actually wants to rule out that there will be another extension of these, uh, of these trade negotiations. So uh, that, that the end of 2020 would be a very hard deadline then for Brexit. And I don't see how they will manage to really make a, a trade deal um, by, by then. So this again means either there will be an extension of the deadline or we will have a disorderly Brexit. David, for, for our viewers, for our clients, I think one of the most important questions is what happens to the city of London as the really the financial capital of Europe? Last week we uh, were reporting that now it looks like um, the EU could be using that, or earlier this week, the EU could be using that as a bargaining chip. What are your expectations for London's place as the, the financial capital of Europe? That's, well, yes, this is going to be a, a huge question in, in 2020, and, and everything's to play for, really. You know, we're going, to come, we're going to hear these phrases we were hearing a year or so ago around um, mutual recognition and equivalence, all these different um, arrangements that the EU and the, and the UK can have in order to recognize each other's uh, financial services sector and the degree to which the access is going to be granted. And it is certainly going to be a bargaining chip. You can <coughs> guarantee that in the negotiations. Plenty of places in Europe, Paris, um, Dublin, Amsterdam, are keen to grab some of that more business uh, of the, the financial sector here in London. The expectation is, look, London's gonna, it's got the scale that no one else can match, at least for the time being. We haven't seen the big flow, outflow of jobs that many predicted, but maybe that will accelerate. Um, we're gonna have to see how hard a Brexit Mr. Johnson wants to negotiate this year. Um, and, um, you know, really everything's to play for, but, you know, they, we can expect uh, some really hard negotiations on both sides on this point.